Hi guys, welcome to Chakra Sessions. I'm your host, Polly Jo LeBay, here broadcasting live um, through Star Nation's radio network. Actually, I don't even know if that's what they call it these days anymore. I'm kind of old school. Um, but through Star Nations, and we're broadcasting um, out into Facebook land and YouTube uh, using Be Live. So hello, everybody. Happy new moon. <laughs> um, the new moon is our focus today, like the energy of it. What are we going to do with it? How do we manage it? Um, how do we harness it uh, to create what we want in our life? And how do we bring um, all of that goodness um, into perspective, especially with what's going on there? <laughs> Hi, Ellen. Yes, my pink hair. Yes, it's a uh, it's going to be in the, the pastel colors. <laughs> um, it's going to be pink and purple and blue, but all in the pastels so that my white hair can kind of shine through underneath a little bit. Um, but the in-between right now is quite pink. <laughs> um, but that's okay. I, I'm, I'm having fun with the pink. Um, and uh, that's, that's part of that. <laughs> ah, thanks, Adrian. <laughs> yeah, I'm, ha I'm having fun. Um, it's definitely one of those things. Um, just, you know, it's, we gotta have joy in our life. Um, and if, if it's hair that's going to make you joyful, well then go for it. Um, it's definitely been, been a playful thing that um, I've enjoyed in the last couple of years. Um, decided to go a little more pastel, but the transition from the really dark uh, purples and stuff like that is the thing. Um, and I guess the choice was kind of pink or orange, and I'm sure nobody wants to be walking around in orange hair right now um, that I know of. <laughs> so here we are. I'm so happy to see so many of you in the house. Ah, Rachel. Uh, I love having you here, Rachel. I, I don't know if I've said this before, but it's like, you know, we connected through my older son and we've had some fun and I see you as like this like playful um, teacher yourself. So it's kind of nice to have you in the house. So hi. Um, hi, Deborah. Nice to have you. Uh, good to see you guys in the house. Thanks about the hair. And thank you, Jackie. Glad to have you. Um, it's so nice to kind of be back. Yay, Abby! <laughs> I've missed you. Yes, you've rocked pink a number of times. Maybe you were in my inspiration. Um, I've definitely en in enjoyed that. Hi, hi, Cindy. Glad to see you. <laughs> I love being the teach. Um, that's like one of my cool archetypes. I love being the teacher. Um, hi, Jen. Nice to have you. Happy New Moon. Um, and let's see. Yes, <laughs> always rocking it. Um, and Carol, hello. Uh, nice to have you here. Um, let's see who else. Ah, Karen. Hi. Oh, we got some dragons in the house Some dragons and Pegasus, uh, former students in the house. Loving that. And, uh, Dinah, you've done a fantastic, uh, hair job too. Um, how you doing? Glad to have you. And uh, Rob says orange is for deer season. Yes. And there are many um, deer hunters in my mom's side of the family. So, you know, around Thanksgiving or so might not be a bad idea. Um, and hello from YouTube land. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so here we are. We're in the new moon. And, um, you know, people might not understand how that impacts our chakras or how it impacts our energy, except sometimes we just notice it, right? We notice that a full moon, you know, certain things happen and maybe the new moon might be a little more subtle for you or the new moon might be just as difficult. Um, hi, Caitlin and Lisa. Nice to see you guys. Um, so, Oh, I love the tigers on that one. <laughs> Hi, Caitlin. Nice to have you. Um, so, oh, thanks, sweetie. The The big thing is for me, you know, I've always been, you know, I have a lot of goddess energy. I know you're shocked um, and surprised by that. Um, but my goddess has always been like in her bloom in the full moon. So, 
you know, when other people were, you know, having crazy days or crazy things happening, I was like in the zone. Um, it's always been a really creative time for me and I'm just going. And the new moon was always this, this lull kind of thing for me. And I didn't totally understand, um, what the energy was for each. I knew that in the, the burst of the full moon, when I was in my peak, that was a great time for me to really let go of the old junk and sort of bring in what I wanted to. Um, but I didn't understand the nuance that the new moon represents. Um, so over the past, you know, few months, especially during, you know, our little quarantine, I've been paying attention. Um, to how my body is and my energy and what are my chakras doing when I'm in each of the moons, whether it's the new moon um, or one of the quarter moons, um, whether it's waxing or waning, which is a whole nother thing <laughs> we can all talk to Julie Hedges about maybe sometime. Um, but in the new moon, the reason why the energy system gets relatively quiet is because it's it's like it's waiting for what's next. Um, so on these days where your whole body is going, what's next? Um, you might be questioning that yourself today. Um, or you might be going, you know, you know what you want to happen next. And you're ready to start um, maybe making it happen. Um, but we all know if we could plug in our intention to more energy, well, then it happens faster and more easily, more smoothly. And that's what the new moon is about. It's about setting clear intentions for what we want to happen. And basically, you, you may notice that there's like a buildup of energy. It's like you're going up the hill on one of those um, those rides that we haven't been on in a while, you know, the roller coaster and you're chugging, 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 chugging up. That's from the new moon. You got, you get on board the roller coaster and then you start heading up for that big drop and all that speed. Well, that big drop and all that speed is the full moon and the chugging upwards. So you can have that big momentum that's from the new moon into the full moon. And when I was paying, really paying close attention to my energy system and my chakras, I noticed that my chakras were doing the same thing. They were, they were, you know, they were getting brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter, um, which sometimes can be a hard thing because as the chakra comes on fuller and fuller, it might bring to your awareness um, stuff that is, you know, kind of clogging up the engine and making it not run too well. Um, and if you're having that experience, you know, you may be having a rough time, you know, in, in different places. And by the time you hit the full moon, you know, you're a hot mess because all this stuff got brought to the surface. Um, but that's why doing healing in the full moon is great because you can let all that stuff go that came up in resistance to what you want to create um, in this new moon energy. And so if we on the new moon, which is today, if we ground that energy into manifestation, if we ground it into um, standing in our truth and our purpose, we can have so much more energetically magnetized to us. So instead of, you know, standing out there as the law of attraction and you're like, Hey, send it my way. Um, how about if you become a superconductor, a super magnet and whoosh, it comes right to you. Kind of cool. Um, so that's where we're at. So let's see who else popped in the house. Oh, Christina, I was just thinking about you. You and I need to chat because um, you popped into my awareness a few times. Uh, and Abby, too, you know, you guys and Karen. <laughs> I, I've been having a lot of uh, former students um, popping into my awareness as um, my new school um, takes root. 
Um, for those of you who don't know, I run Trinity Mystical Energy. Um, and it's a mystery school, but it's also a school for energy medicine. Um, and as part of that, you know, we had to basically create a brand new school um, for being able to do online and be able to do what we needed to do in person. It has a whole new structure and a new formula. Um, but it's, it's, I'm having a lot of fun. I don't know if Cindy's having a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> Cindy's in the house. She might have a different perspective. Um, but it's definitely, you know, one of the things that I set a very strong intention with um, in the new moon in January and allowed the school to take root in that energy. Um, so birthing that baby, that energetic baby in the new moon and allowing it to get planted. Um, and as old things came up to release in the full moon, releasing them, releasing them, and just letting the, the school grow. And that was my intention was to, to launch the school in a bigger, fuller way. Um, and really be in a place where um, it matched me um, and there was room for it to grow um, in the future uh, without draining and exhausting me. <laughs> I'm sure you know, you guys know how that could be. Hi, Christine. Nice to have you in the house too. Glad to have you here. Another beautiful artist there. Um, you know, I love, I love the creativity and the, the art flow that happens when we connect to our energy centers. Um, and that's what the Aquarius energy is bringing for us. It's bringing, you know, I'm sure you've already heard this, but it's bringing a lot of creative flow and it's bringing a lot of water, which, which can unleash a lot of emotions. Um, some of them pretty, some of them not so pretty, and that's okay. Um, because we want all of the energy that we have in our body to be in motion. And that's what emotions are. It's energy in motion. Um, and, you know, the thing that keeps coming up is that when we block our emotions or we try to stop them, we're really putting the brakes on our energy flow. And it blocks all of our flow, not just our emotions. <laughs> um, so here we are in the new moon and it's like we can set the intention to restore our energy back to flow. How cool is that? That way there's room for the creative ideas to flow. There's room for your um, communication with other people to flow more easily, even in retrograde. <laughs> um, that's how all of this um, is coming about. So when we're in this place of tapping into our highest potential, you know, that's what living our true purpose is about, you know, and a lot of people are talking about that. It's nothing new. Um, but are you talking it or are you being it? Um, that's where the discrepancy is that I've seen um, and experienced. And, you know, we might get the concepts intellectually, but are we able to live them? Um, and so in this new moon, we can live whatever intention aligns for us. And, you know, you can change it up. <laughs> you don't have to like start with one, one intention. And then later, you know, you know, two weeks from now you go, yeah, maybe that wasn't such a good choice. Uh, yeah. Then let it go in the full moon and start again. Um, and take a little time, take a couple weeks to decide what's my next intention. Um, because remember, you know, all of the most magical things that have ever happened in science happened in experiments. And each experiment that is out there for everything that we have that we know, there were thousands of failures um, that got us to that point. Because it was like, okay, well, that part didn't work, but this part did. So let's try something new. Um, that's how we can actually live our life, right? Is that if we don't like things that are going on, okay, change it. Um, set a new intention, set a new focus. 
set a new vision of where you want things to be um, and head in that direction. And when things come up to distract you or block you, um, decide whether you want to keep stepping in the in the path of your intention and your creation, or do you realize that maybe that is the way you really want to go? Um, Cause I'll let you know a secret. The shortcut is usually the long way around. <laughs> Anything that seems like, well, this way is going to be easier. That's usually actually the way that's harder. <laughs> um, so when we choose to step out of our comfort zone, we're actually usually stepping into the flow. Um, Cause not everybody's going to step into, you know, the, the white water rafting, you know, um, and just step right in and go fast, right? You, you would stand there on the shore and go, uh, maybe not. Um, so the universe gives us a way to take a path around the water, um, which might be, take us a lot longer than if we just went, ah, oh, heck with it. I'm just going to go. Um, so there you go. Um, hi, Nathan. Glad to have you. <laughs> I'm glad everybody's loving the hair. Um, I appreciate that. Um, every time that you go out, I'll be stepping too. Nice. <laughs> I love when we have those references. Hi. Hi, Carol. Love having you here. Yes, Pinky. We're, we're transitioning as I'm letting some of my, my true white hair underneath come in, but still having fun with it because I'm not ready for, you know, uh, boring hair. You guys know that about me. Um, who've been here, you know, those of you who've been here know that. Um, so as we are thinking about, you know, <laughs> Pinky Tuscadero. Yes, I liked her a lot. <laughs> um, as we're thinking about, you know, what would we like to create in our life right now? Um, I invite you to maybe write down an intention, maybe one little thing. You know, and maybe you have a big thing and maybe you have a couple little things. Um, it's usually a good idea to not write down more than three things <laughs> um, because then it's hard for your spiritual team to know what you are intending. Um, and we're going to do a healing um, transmission um, to help you really connect to your own energy, feel it. Um, and my team will help you and your team to see how to ground your creation energy so that your intention has somewhere to percolate. <laughs> I'm seeing it like a cauldron. So it's like, um, it's going to cook a little bit. It'll cook until the new moon and, and then really launch in the new moon. Um, hi, Judy. Nice to have you here too. Um, so great, great stuff <laughs> is what's coming through. Um, for those of you who, you know, I haven't seen very often, you know, I'm back online um, and chakra sessions is going to take a new form, kind of like me. Um, not sure what that really is going to look like, but, you know, we'll hang out and figure it out <laughs> um, until probably about April. Um, I'll probably I'll switch to a new format, but my plan is to keep this time. Um, so Thursdays at seven, I'm going to be dedicated to you, um, coming to you so that we can reconnect and we can create our own community. Um, you know, people who want to share information or who maybe want to, um, really come together to, um, have a safe space, a sacred place to be during all the chaos <laughs> that may be still going on around us. Um, it's nice to have a reboot, I think. Um, and that's what um, my space has been like on, on Star Nations is, you know, having some teaching and some learning so that you can go forward with more knowledge and really embracing the healing that we all need to connect to or um, maybe are missing. Um, and it creates that, that 
rhythm of being able to do it on a weekly basis, you know, and the fact that these are recorded and you can grab it when you need it, um, that's even better, right? So that on days when you're, you know, when the new moon comes up and it's not on <laughs> on a, a night that I broadcast, well, you can grab a hold of this and and skip forward to the meditation, set your intention and go. Um, I just think this is so great. <laughs> um, I love when my team does that. Um, so one of the things that's coming up as we're in the Aquarian age is that um, some people are having a little extra anxiety, a, a little extra overwhelm. And that's because instead of, you know, driving 30 miles an hour, we're driving, you know, 80 miles an hour. <laughs> Um, and if you're a newbie at that, um, it can feel a little fast. Um, and, you know, some of us might be, you know, have a hot rod or a lead foot or <laughs> whatever. And it's like, all right, let's go. Um, but some of us, that's a little bit much, you know, it can. And then we put on the brakes too heavy. Um, so it's like we go either like too fast or we stop altogether and it's then it's hard to get the engine started again and all of that happens when we get nervous when we get overwhelmed um and really when we stop breathing um when we <sighs> need to do that <laughs> to allow room for spirit to enter um you know when we're inspired it's because we make room for spirit to come in and give us you know this little light bulb of like hey try that um those sparks of imagination those sparks of creativity they come in when we create a sacred space inside of us um to allow that connection to happen and right now you know, things are changing um, or needing to change and we need creative energy. And there's nothing more inspiring than when we're in somebody else's creative energy and their flow. Um, I love watching artists paint or singers sing their favorite music or musicians just play something that they created or again, their favorite thing that just sings to their soul, that it speaks to us, right, on a soul level. And that can happen too with, you know, somebody creating, um, you know, a, a business app or, or um, I don't know, uh, <laughs> um, or they create a really cool meal or they write a fantastic story. It's, when it's in alignment with that that person, um, we feel the magic and we get carried away. And the moon energy, we're so connected here on, on the earth. You know, the moon revolves around us and it reminds us of, you know, there's that, that pull, that little bit of resistance, you know, and, you know, when we pull back on an elastic, you know, you know, if you only pull back a little bit, how far is it going to go when you try to shoot it? Or do you gently pull it back till it's just ready to release and then you let it go and it and it then it can actually get some momentum when we understand the energy in how our chakras um, and our energy react to the moon. Um, and to the, the different planets, because boy, each planet will impact us too. But right now, just focusing on one little thing. In the new moon, it's the quiet time to start pulling back and getting ready to project our energy forward. So what do you want to create? What, what would you love to see in your life in the next month, three months, six months? It's it's a time where we can plant that seed and get it ready. Um, and, you know, when you can um, use uh, something like a ritual, um, for instance, that allows you to have a little more intention, 
So it creates another layer of intention. So before we got started, I saged the whole room and I ensaged uh, Facebook land <laughs> by, by setting the intention I was saging. Um, and then I lit a candle to let my spiritual team know, hey, we're doing some work tonight and will you please be here and help us with that? That's part of my ritual. Um, the other part of my ritual is um, I use essential oils. So I chose what oil wanted to be um, on my body for this show. Um, and the blend that wanted to be on was surprise, surprise, the manifestation blend wanted to come on, <laughs> um, which is great. Um, and that blend is, is, you know, helps get the creation energy flowing and moving and, and going forward. So all of those amplify the intention of what we're doing. And you may have your own, you know, some people sit in a particular chair and they might wear particular clothes or they might have flowers or an altar. And I have a number of different altars that are set up um, and each one has its own intention. And the altar that I have lit um, is the one that is um, dedicated to creation and sacred geometry. And it pulls in all of that. So some of you might use um, like a Merkaba or um, Metatron's cube or the flower of life um, or the um, spiral with the F name that I can't get into my brain <laughs> uh, right now, the Finucci, but something like that um, spiral because they all have um, Fibonacci. Fibonacci. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> um I'm like, I could see it, but I couldn't say it. Not the right brain. <laughs> so that when we connect to some of the sacred geometry, that also sets an intention, you know, um, for some people, you know, you might, the ritual might be that you're wearing your cross or your star of David or your Ankh, because that helps you connect to the, the spiritual aspect of your, um, your life and your energy field. Um, and so whatever you want to create, um, I don't see there being a right or a wrong answer to that. It's all about what's your intent. Um, and our intent is how can we bring, you know, something positive into our lives, you know? Um, and when you guys are um, setting an intention, remember, to intend and create for yourself. Um, we all want to create peace, you know, uh, well, I hope <laughs> we all want to create peace and we can focus on that. But if we create peace inside of ourselves, then we're no longer a magnet for anything that's not peace. So the best way to create peace out there is to create peace in here. So you might set an intention of um, finding ways to restore yourself to inner peace more frequently, you know, um, because when we have that awareness, we can take that step and that energy. So um, that's how we go. Um, so if you have paper or pen, you know, you might want to write down what you would like to, to see happen. Um, what would you like to create? Um, and again, try to do the creation for yourself. Um, you know, cause it's a little messy when we try to create in somebody else's reality. Um, because it may not be what's for their highest best. Um, that's why we focus on ourselves. Um, and we create what we feel is best for ourselves in this moment, right? And that changes in every moment. So, um, you know, so maybe, you know, you're, you've got a project that you want to ground and, and get off the ground. Maybe you're writing a new book or you're going to plant some seeds um, to start a garden in the Springs. Um, Martina's saying a peaceful life for me. Um, yeah. So, 
so grounding in peace and tranquility. Um, my team often talks about ease and grace. Um, if we can bring ease, grace, and gratitude um, into our life, then peace follows, right? So this is a, a way for you to think about that. Like, what does peace look like for you? What's peaceful? Um, what's tranquil for you? Um, and maybe it's having quiet time every day um, that, you know, you can have some sacred time to restore yourself to peace. Maybe it's first thing in the morning. Maybe if it's right before bed, maybe it's in the middle of the day when the stress can be getting um, elevated, right? That's That could be one of the things you know maybe you want to create a new lifestyle maybe you want to um eat healthier or maybe you want to exercise um in a way that's more in alignment with how you like to do things <laughs> um more joyful um and yes martina saying learning to stay there is the hard part i think that's the hard part for all of us um, because our inner critic, you know, is, is always telling us what we're doing wrong. <laughs> um, and sometimes we believe it. Um, and our inner child um, might be bored in too much tranquility, you know, and wants to act out and play a little bit. Um, so finding that balance where the child feels seen and heard, um, but that part of you that just needs the overstimulation to stop. Um, there's plenty of empaths in the house. And the thing that is most difficult for us is the overstimulation. Too much stuff going on and, and it's, it's happening so rapidly that it's hard for our body to process it, integrate it, ground it, get it off of us. <laughs> Um, and we go into um, overwhelm or we freeze or, um, you know, we eat whatever it, is, <laughs> whatever it is that we might do to cope um, with all of that. So um, I take, take a moment um, to think about what you would like to create. Um, and maybe it's just a little more peace and harmony for yourself. <laughs> um, that's very cute, Rob. Um, so we're going to do a meditation. Um, and, and in the meditation, we're going to, you know, activate the energy that will help us in creating in this new moon. Um, and we'll take a moment too to release anything that might be blocking our creativity or blocking our creation energy. Um, all right. So try to get yourself comfy. Um, if you can, you want your arms and your legs uncrossed. We want our circuits wide open um, so that nothing gets blocked energetically. And I invite you to just, um, you know, have a comfy spot to sit or lay down. And just give yourself a little space um, for just a few minutes to really connect with your soul and your spirit. Um, and your spiritual team, your guides, your angels, your ancestors, um, and make room for the divine flow to flow with you um, and to you and through you. So take a couple of deep breaths. I'm going to breathe. Really allowing the lungs to fill. We're gonna set the sacred space, the sacred container for us to do our connection and our healing in. And we're gonna ask the divine to surround and protect us in a bubble of infinite love and infinite light. And setting the intention that this 
healing and connection and creation energy is for the good of all and harm to none, including ourselves. We're going to take a moment to feel into our heart, allowing the unconditional love to fill it, expand it, calm it, and ground it. So sensing or imagining that beautiful heart creating a really strong cord of connection through all of our lower chakras, down through the earth, through our feet, into the ground. Connecting directly to the heart of Grandmother Earth. And in that heart-to-heart -heart connection, allowing her energy to flow to us and support us. Reminding and reconnecting us to the rhythm of the earth. In this moment, And then also sending a connection from our heart all the way up to the divine masculine, to the center of creation. Oh. Clearing the pathway for the healing energy to flow to us and through us. And from the heart, feeling the energy radiate out through each of our layers of our aura in each direction, dimension, vibration, and frequency that we are able to connect to And now inviting in our spiritual teams to guide us, connect us to our inner wisdom and the wisdom of all that is. Feeling that connection activate in our intuition, in our third eye, helping us perceive and see more clearly the direction of our intention, our life and our purpose. opening up the pathways of communication with our teams, our angels, our guides, ancestors, all beings of the highest, fullest, and brightest vibration available to us. Awakening our senses, and our clear senses. And feeling the connection between our second chakra and all of our flow. And our fifth chakra. Where all of that creativity is expressed through us 
birthed through us. Opening in our hips. The manifestation circuit. Grounding it into our root chakra, our foundation, our support. in both our physical and our spiritual lives. And inviting the energy of the new moon to connect to us. Coming down from above, you might sense a flickering whitish, bluish light that may get brighter or stronger as it approaches. And allowing that new moon energy to anchor in our heart. Connecting to the unconditional love Connecting to our intention in its highest vibration. Anchoring it down in our manifestation circuit. In this and each dimension that we have access to. Planting the seed, allowing it to begin to grow its own roots within us, as well as connected deep within the earth. And inviting our spiritual teams to help guide us and direct us as we set this creative energy in motion. Taking a moment to release any energy That may be blocking us from creating. You may be experiencing tightness somewhere in your body, like your neck, your shoulders, your belly, your back. And filling those places with beautiful love and light, breaking it apart, dissolving it putting the energy back in motion. I'm taking a moment of gratitude with our spiritual teams for being here and being present with us as we set this new intention, this new direction for this moment. And allowing any excess energy to go deep within the earth or up to the divine. Bringing our energy back to this present moment. Beginning to experience our physical body may feel your clothes, you may feel your connection to the chair or whatever you are connected to, the floor, a bed. (sighs) 
And just begin taking a couple of deep breaths. And with each breath, just becoming more aware of your physical environment, your surroundings. You might notice noises that are happening around you. You may smell something like I smell my essential oils. And gently, you know, open your eyes and begin to, you know, rub your hands and feet uh, so you can get back in your space. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> I hope everybody's back. <laughs> um, but take your time. You know, the reintegration every takes a different amount of time. And, you know, you can stretch or yawn, whatever feels good for you. Um, that's That's how this works. Um, so as you maybe experience, you could sense, you know, your energy, um, getting fuller or more peaceful or lighter. And, um, as that energy got lighter, it, it's allowing room for creation energy to flow. Um, that stuck feeling is when, you know, we're not fully breathing deeply. We are in our head and spinning around thinking about what to do next or, or, you know, I've got this to do for laundry and tomorrow I got to do that. When we're not here, it's really difficult for us to um, create. We need to be quiet. We need to be in this moment. Um, and we need to invite our spiritual teams to help us out. Um, that's part of the law of attraction is that, you know, bring the whole team on board. <laughs> um, but you have to be ready to ask for what you want. Um, and, you know, it's sometimes the asking is hard because we don't really know. Um, but like Martina had said, maybe, you know, just more peaceful. Um, you guys are very welcome. Those of you who said thank you, Nathan. Uh, Rachel and Jackie. I'm glad. Um, I think being more peaceful is, is like a gift. It's a, it's a gift that I can share. Like I can help you have a little peace right now. Uh, and maybe you let some of the crazy day or the crazy week go. Um, and in letting that go, there was space for something even more wonderful to come your direction. Um, and that's fantastic. <laughs> um, because that's how we begin to create the life and the world that we want to have around us is by taking those moments to get quiet enough to ask for some guidance and for some help and to really get clear on what do we want or what do we need? Um, and asking for it. Um, <laughs> there's nothing wrong for, <laughs> for asking what you need. Um, that's what's blocked a lot of people's second chakras is, you know, we think we, we shouldn't ask for something um, because somebody told us a long time ago we shouldn't. Um, and, but the reality is, how's anybody supposed to know what you need if you don't ask? Um, so, and Judy's saying, we need more quiet time. Yeah, most of us do, um, which which is funny because, you know, many of us, you know, have gone through periods of, you know, isolation <laughs> recently. But in the isolation, I don't know about you guys, but did you notice how much noisier you got? You know, um, you're on your phone, you're watching TV, you've got something going on. Like we've, I don't know about you guys, but filled the space with noise. Um, and like, because when it's quiet and we're quiet, then we're really close to our emotions. And sometimes, you know, the emotions can feel overwhelming to feel all of our feels. Um, and so we try to fill in the noise um, so we don't connect to that. But those emotions are just letting us know what direction we're, we want to take. Um, and so we got to get quiet to hear them. 
Um, Lisa said, thank you, conductor. <laughs> um, I appreciate that. I, I like that term. That's, that's a, uh, that's a term I can get behind. Um, so yeah, um, as you go forward, you know, in, in, you know, at this new moon cycle, um, see how often you can realign with your, um, intention, um, in the next two weeks, you know, just notice when you're, you get wavered off your intention. Um, and we don't need to go into blame or anything else. Um, we can just be curious like, Oh yeah, I stepped off that intention. <laughs> um, but then realign if you really want to. Um, that's kind of how the universe tests us to see that we really are asking for what we want, um, not what we think we want, um, which is a, um, a different thing. So Judy's saying there's difference in quiet time and just being there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and and we all have a different version of quiet time looks like to us, you know? Um, and then, you know, there are some people like I was an only child. So quiet time was not necessarily a good thing for me. Um, cause it meant that nobody was around and, um, you know, I might not have been getting the attention I wanted, or I might've been caught in loneliness. Um, so some people being alone, um, then quiet can, can have that, that connotation, but it's just remembering that quieting all the noise inside of us. So we can actually hear, we can actually hear our higher self. We can hear our inner wisdom. We can communicate with our inner child and see what the child needs. Um, if we're being super noisy, um, it's hard to hear, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, that quiet is a great space. Um, and so I will be back for chakra sessions um, in two weeks. Um, next week at seven o'clock um, is Angel Therapy with Maureen Mann. Um, she will be in the time zone <laughs> um, next week. And then starting in March, I will be here. Um, and the plan is um, I'm going to do every week, I believe. Um, I may have to do it without my co-pilot because I haven't talked to him about <laughs> doing every Thursday, but that's, that's what my team, my spiritual team is like, step up and be consistent. Um, so you guys know where to find me. Um, and we will be talking about, um, you know, our energy system and how to move forward with it um, in this new Aquarian age, because we've all gone through some major changes. Um even if it's just to our routine. Um, and so how do we reground, regroup and recreate uh, the life and the purpose that we've been looking for? Um, and if you guys want to find me online, want to connect with me, uh, you can reach out to me, um, message me through the chakra sessions page, or you can also reach out to me through my um, website, which is um, www.trinitymysticalenergy.com. Um, and, you know, for those of you who know about my magical oil blends that I have um, channeled and created, uh, they're, they're, most of them are now online there. <laughs> um, we're working on rebuilding um, our, our store, our mystical boutique. So you can always take a peek and see how it's going um, with the crystals and the sage and the and all the stuff. Um, so have a look at that and you can enjoy that. Um, and until then, you know, I invite you to find some quiet time um, for yourself and find some ways to um, really set some clear intentions on um, how you want to move forward. Um, even if it's just, I want to uh, clean my room. <laughs> I want some help to keep my room clean and spotless so I can feel comfortable in my living space. Cool. Great intention. Um, so with that, you guys, oh, thank you, Jackie. I'm, I know you, you're a fan of, of the oils. I know a number of people are here. Um, so thank you for so many of you um, showing up tonight. I appreciate you. Um, and I will see you in two weeks. Um, bye guys. Have a great night. Mwah. Bye.
Yes, Judy, I make them for diffusers too. <laughs> Bye, guys.